and we're off and running welcome everybody hey i've got the wacky nathan allen on the phone with me right now before we get to that while the audience builds just welcome it's wednesday it is september 27th 4 20 p.m it's hump day hump day happy hour while the audience builds let me give the show dates coming up this Saturday, September 30th, I will be in Ray, Colorado for a fundraiser at the Elks Club. So if I got any Colorado friends, fans, followers, try to get out there to that one. I know Colorado's a big fucking state, but uh, that's where I will be, the booming metropolis of Ray, Colorado. And then next Saturday, October 7th, my co-star, Nathan Tricky Allen, who is on the phone with me right now, We'll be heading out to Tealman, Minnesota for the Dirty Jokes and Magic Trick show that takes place at BJ's Bar and Grill. So thank you guys for watching. I'm trying to stream live on YouTube right now, but I'm having some technical difficulties. I just keep hitting try again and reconnecting and blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to be a little bit less ranty today. I got in trouble yesterday. I got reported by one of you fuckers who apparently can't handle the word retard. That's the only guess that I can possibly make that happened. I got reported for um, com violation of community standards and use of restrictive content, et cetera, et cetera. The entire 420 report that I did yesterday just completely disappeared. But you know what? It was a lot of fun because I wound up just doing a second one at 520. It's always 420 somewhere, right, Nathan? Right. That, that, that's, what I, that's what they tell me. I was a little less ranty. I'm kind of bummed out. I was really looking forward to being part of that. I thought you were just going to go ape. I was just going nuts. You don't oh, feel my. like I did go ape shit yesterday? Didn't you see that second one? I was fucking pissed. Yeah, yeah. I tuned in for a little bit while I was uh, making dinner or whatever. Yeah. It's a uh, hump day happy hour. What are you drinking, dude? Uh, coffee, actually. Coffee. What? Coffee. I, I, I don't know. I'm in, I, I'm in the caffeine like I've been hyping this up that I was going to be joined by the alcoholic magician, Nathan Tricky Allen, and it turns out you're just drinking coffee. <laughs> well, if uh, the 12-step programs are to be believed, once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. So technically, it's not wrong, I guess. I just, uh, I don't know. Suppers are my friend lately. What are your thoughts about performers drinking on stage? It's a mixed bag. Some people say they should. Some people say they shouldn't. If you don't have a problem with it, obviously. I think if they can still do their job, who gives a shit? Right. I mean, if it's not like a goddamn kid's birthday party, of course. <laughs> that'd be a little weird. Or, although, if, if you should drink anywhere, it might be there. You know, five-year-old birthday party, a bunch of kids running around. I don't know. What do you yeah, think? well, I think that that would be the most appropriate place to drink. You know what my favorite beer is? Any beer they uh, serve at a children's birthday party. <laughs> You know what my second favorite beer is? Uh, Whatever beer I no. wish they were serving at a children's birthday party. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right, we got a nice, good audience built up now. Um, so, dude, yesterday I was ranting and raving because I feel like censorship is bullshit. The Internet is supposed to be a place where we can speak freely, broadcast our shit out to the world. And, you know, I get that Facebook has community standards, but really, really, I wasn't putting porn up. I wasn't doing anything gratuitous. I wasn't doing anything offensive. People said that they had watched yesterday live and that they didn't hear anything offensive. Were you watching my 420 report yesterday live? I was not, but after I saw the, the chaos afterwards, I kind of wished I had been. But, but you said it wasn't anything out of the ordinary from what you usually do, right? Not what I usually do. So tell me, like, do, I mean, and you know how I am. I usually rant and rave, and I do say things that might be considered inappropriate, maybe even disrespectful, but offensive? No, you know, because who am I? I'm just a shit fuck talking into a laptop camera. What are your thoughts on censorship? Because I know that you get a lot of crap from people that want to book you for an event where there are going to be kids there. They think that because you're a magician, that that's what you do. You do children's birthday parties, you do post proms. And I know that you've gotten a lot of shit in the past 
from saying things that are considered inappropriate in front of the wrong crowd. So what are your thoughts on all that? I think, man, I don't think that's a censorship issue. That's not a First Amendment issue at all. That's just either me not being super clear about the kind of show that is best for me and the type of event that is best for me on a website or whatever, or them just being super illiterate and not able to watch a goddamn YouTube video on my website to just, like, see that. I mean, as soon as you hit the play button on my main demo video, there's a parental advisory sticker. Parental advisory sticker at the top of my website. I mean, it's pretty pretty clear, I thought. But, but that's not a censorship issue. That's just a, what kind of entertainer would be right for your party, knowing who to ask. Right. And then if you do end up booking the wrong person, maybe find a way to work that out or talk to them beforehand or something. Okay, so maybe not censorship, but what about people who are easily offended or too sensitive to be able to handle even the type of innocuous material that you do? You do innuendos, and you do a lot of stuff that's geared for adults, but it's not any it's not offensive whatsoever. Oh, by the way, let me plug your date. Coming up in Boxcars Pub and Grub. That's really why I had you on. I want to promote your show coming up at Boxcars Pub and Grub in Clinton, Wisconsin. You'll be kicking off the first installment of the Grassroots Comedy Tour that they have the first Wednesday of every month from October through March, I believe it is. And then in April, we get together for a big special event on like a Wednesday night or a Sunday night. So I know they're looking forward to having you back at that one. What do you like doing? You like doing the corporate gigs? You like doing the bar gigs better? Depends on the bar gig. Depends on the corporate gig, obviously. I'm sure I can hear you rolling your eyes right now. But uh, <laughs> the corporate gigs are just fucking amazing fun. You know, they're um, kind of like your type of corporate party, you know, nine to five type folks, and they're, they're there to have fun. They got an open bar or whatever. Um, some bars are stuck up and boring as hell to me, but some of them are like super crazy, you know. Who, right. who slashed your tits at a magician? Well, some of my, some of my best. <laughs> nice. <laughs> not, re- not recently, if, you know, my wife is listening, not recently. Not recently. At a corporate but, show, they flashed their titties at you? That's happened, yeah, uh, twice now. What was the company party? Like, Dangerous Curves, oh, no, no, hear no, names? No, not, 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 not a company party. No, these were, these were bar gigs. These were bar gigs. I misunderstood. Yeah, at a bar gig. At a bar gig, they flashed their titties a lot. Yeah, yeah. You know, and my wife, it came here. She's she's right upstairs in the bedroom. She's probably listening. Okay. She's probably eavesdropping right now. Bob LaFada, you know Bob LaFada from the Eagles uh, in Gary, Indiana, that we did a while back? Yeah. He yeah, said that you right. should just be able to use magic and turn that coffee into alcohol. That's a good idea. Or I could just open the liquor cabinet and turn it into alcohol. Yeah, right. Just pour some black velvet in there like you usually do on a Saturday morning. Yeah. Let me, uh, <laughs> let me get on that. What were you talking about? Uh, hey, man, so we're talking about bullshit and censorship and people getting easily offended. I don't think it is. It's not a First Amendment issue. Facebook is a private company. YouTube is a private company. When you get hired by a bar or a nightclub or a corporate gig like what you like to do a lot, they are well within their rights to have a certain criteria, the type of material that they want. And as an entertainer, I do feel like you have a professional responsibility to either honor that or, like you say, tell them that you are not the right performer for the gig. So that way they can go out and find the right performer for the gig. Because a lot of times they'll get someone in who will say, oh, yeah, I can do anything. I'll work clean. Then they'll go in and they'll be offensive. And what happens is the next year that they bring in karaoke and and they, they blame, oh, we can't have comedians in here anymore because the last one was offensive and he pissed off the manager. He pissed off the CEO or he he upset little Sally who's the HR person but oh, I do okay. think you can have if you, so if you put your sure we had a comedian and then the next four just always but yeah I somebody mentioned that on, uh, on one of the comedian pages on Facebook there yeah go and elaborate on that the opposite direction is also fucked up you know the, somebody has an adult crowd like the kind of company party that I usually do and they want something a little different so they find a magician and the magician is like yeah I do an adult show and it's crazy and it's wild and then they roll in with the same material and same props that they do for their five-year-old birthday party show, and that's even more embarrassing, I think. It's it's because, it's in the opposite direction. Yeah, they sell yeah. themselves as wild and crazy, and they come in lame and boring. 
Right, yeah. They, they might say, they say darn once instead right. of saying that or what I think. You get the point. Yeah, totally. Totally. Um, so now what about, what about restrictions on say psychics or mentalists that, cause I know you have a g- opinion on this who are billing themselves as something that they're not like they really can communicate with the dead. And meanwhile, they're just using tricks and gimmicks. I know Harry Houdini exposed a lot of those fuckers back in the day, but what are your thoughts on that? Because they're still out there rolling around. They're still taking people's money and they're still claiming that they're communicating with your dead uncle Bobby, who if they knew anything about me, they would know that that fucker's deaf and can't talk anyway. So if they're communicating with my dead uncle Bobby, it sounds like, how the fuck are they going to decipher that Chewbacca language? But I know you got opinion on that. And it's, it's part of what I'm talking about. It's bullshit. Whereas people are misrepresenting themselves. And yes, they do have the freedom to do it. But is it right? Just because they have the right, does it make it right? Uh, morally, I think they're they're kind of pieces of shit. But that's kind of a complicated issue because, like, I don't want to stop anybody from doing what they're doing. And they're always going to come back and say, well, it's just for entertainment value, entertainment purposes. And they may even have a disclaimer, a tiny print uh, or whatever. But you know damn well that the people who are paying $50 tickets to go see that guy you know, the John Von Prague or the Sylvia Browns or the John Edward, Edwards, whichever one it is, they're going because they think that their dead Uncle Bobby is going to come and talk to them, and then they get there, and it's nothing like they see on TV. You know, TV, they have a chance to edit out all the misses and all the craps, you know, the, uh, the, the, the playing 20 questions part before they start to get into details. Um, but at the same time, it is just entertainment, because I think anybody with a damn brain in their head would know that this stranger isn't talking isn't being the go-between between me and dead Uncle Bobby. So if, if you're, so you're, what are you saying that if someone is dumb enough that they deserve to have, they deserve to be taken advantage of? <laughs> See, that's even more nuanced because on one hand, I'm like, uh, yeah. But on the other hand, I wish more people were more educated about how those psychics and uh, talkers to the dead work. And they, they could realize, I mean, just, just under, just it's cold reading, you dummies. It's cold reading, <laughs> it's magicians' tricks. It's 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 blatant trickery, and it's kind of sad. You know, it's somebody I know, an acquaintance, not a good friend, but after her boyfriend died, she racked up a bill that was over eight hundred bucks with uh, Sylvia Brown's psychic network. And get this, one of the dudes who originally taught. I forgot which company it was. I don't know if it was the Psychic Friends Network or, or what, but he is a, a mentalist, a mind reader, a very successful one, and I promised I wouldn't say anything about who he is or mention him being involved in this. But yeah. he was the one that taught that company how to train their, um, their, their phone operators, their, quote, psychics. So they were trained by a friggin' magician. Oh, right, to okay. Do linguistic tricks trick people into it. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable from this side of the, uh, from this side of the stage. It's like, you just look around going, really? Really? And they made bang too, man. I went to see one and I'm not, I wasn't joking. It was a $50 ticket. We're on the wrong business. 45 minute thing. Um, so, but, and wasn't there a guy that he went on the tonight show and he gimmicked some of the props and then when uh, Yuri Geller came on, he couldn't do the spoon bending? Yeah, I, if I remember, I think Johnny Carson did that to, uh, to fuck with Yuri Geller. Because Johnny Carson was real big into magic, too. He was kind of a hobbyist magician. And I think, if I remember right, I think he insisted that they provide their own, uh, like, silverware and shit from the kitchen at The Tonight Show. Yeah, but I thought that there was a, I thought there was actually a magician that toured around and he was an escape artist. And I, I swear I saw a documentary on Netflix about this. A guy, he, he went in and his whole mission was to prove that these guys were frauds. And Randy, yeah, James Randy. The who, Amazing Randy. Yeah, the Amazing looks Randy. Like, uh, looks like Charles Darwin. Right. Okay. So now how did he do that? Because he obviously was, he had some inside knowledge in order to be able to expose them. 
So how, what did he do? Uh, it was just a lot of media appearances, just kind of a personal crusade. You know, continuing on with Houdini started, I guess, is kind of, and maybe that's why I've been arrested and so angry at these people because they've been pulling this shit for, you know, 100 years. But, um, yeah, he went as far as to train this kid, like this 19-year-old kid at the time, mm -hmm. into being this, uh, like, guru who would, uh, and they flew him to Australia with a whole bunch of fake press clippings and um, that he was this South American guy. His name is Jose Alvarez, I think is his name. If I remember right, I think James Randi ended up marrying him. <laughs> He's like way younger than James Randi. It's just really funny because I remember hearing about it, but I had no idea that they were lovers or anything like that. Uh, but they convinced all these news networks and shit in Australia that this guy was for real. They didn't do any research, and they had the live shows, and then they uh, came, and it was just real, uh, just real generic shit. But people would walk away, you know, amazed. You know, it, it, was, it was exactly what I was looking for. This was, you know, if you describe me to a T, you talk to my dead relative, blah blah blah. This, Carlos character is his name. People would offer to buy these crystals they sold at the merch table, basically for like thousands of dollars, and they picked them up to like a buck at a flea market. You know, right? And they went back and did a whole expose and like, look, we duped you, motherfuckers, just as an education to the public. But you know, maybe don't whip out your wallet every time somebody promises something you might like. Yeah, they get emotionally invested, and it's easy to start spending bucks when you're all emotionally fired up like that when you think that you have access to some magic crystal and that that's going to give you the ability to communicate with the dead. I mean, they're preying on people who are grieving. You right. Know, their weakest point in their lives. Right. They're desperate. And that's what I think is just super shitty. Not even, it, it, it's just abhorrent. I can't even put, put it into words how gross it is. I think you did. You just called it shitty, abhorrent, and gross. <laughs> um so would you ever go around as like a personal project or do a documentary or something just for the hell of it to try to expose psychics and other mentalists that are borderline fraudulent by using their own tricks against them would is that something you would ever do if I, yeah i think i probably would if i ever like got super bored doing my stupid magic shows or something, or a, a real cool opportunity came up. James Randi's uh, educational foundation is real deep, doing a great job, um, you know, doing the investigations, and, and they've got a whole team of people. Uh, you know, they've even got this, like, million-dollar challenge. Like, if you can prove that you have a paranormal ability in any way, shape, or form, get a hold of us. We'll agree to a test that we all agree on. It would be a fair demonstration of your powers. And uh, to, the, to date, and this has been decades, decades, uh, not one person has even gotten past, I want to say, the preliminary tests. And what are the preliminary tests? I don't know the exact specifics, but it would, uh, I would assume it would be like a simple version of like dousing or a simple version of, you know, whatever the big elaborate, this is no kidding, real, if I got it right test would be right whatever they're claiming that is possible then they run some sort of uh audit, put them through some sort of audition process to see if they're full of shit or not i, I think that's that the exact and uh, nobody makes it through step the one out the whack jobs yeah right okay right on man hey when did you start doing magic uh when i was like 12 mm -hmm. it was a different show then of course. Oh, you mean you weren't drinking shots of, of of whiskey on stage and downing 17 Budweiser's while you're escaping <laughs> from ropes when you're 12 years old? <laughs> <laughs> it was Mountain Dew, man. It was Mountain Dew. So what got you into it? Into drinking? Like <laughs> yeah, into drinking. <laughs> Peer pressure. Hanging out with comedians. You know. uh, I got a little magic kit for my birthday. You know, stupid little toy magic set. And other kids had friends or were good at sports, but uh, I didn't have any of that shit, so I just stuck with the magic tricks. And then you just stayed with it? Yeah. 20 years later? Yeah, <laughs> that's fucking depressing. What are you, what are you like, 30, you're 32 now, aren't you? Uh, 33. 33. So, time to kick this Messiah complex into yeah. high gear. This yeah, year. Jesus was alive and dead by your age. What the fuck have you done? I, I'm working on it. I'm, wor I'm working on the dead part. <laughs> <laughs> I just 
five and a coffee. Right on. Well, good. And finally, if we're 20 minutes into Hump Day Happy Hour on the 420 Report. By the way, if you guys are interested, if you're in the southern Wisconsin area, and if there are any tickets left, because they almost always sell out, you can head to Boxcars Pub and Grub in Clinton, Wisconsin. It's just outside of Janesville, just north of Rockford, Illinois, about 20 miles. I'm just sort of guessing here, but it's in that general area. Boxcars Pub and Grub, they've been doing the grassroots comedy tour now there for about five years. They sell out pretty much every show. I've talked to Tim Pogos there, and he said that maybe in the last five years, they've had a total of 10 empty seats. That's and over the every year. one of them was at the magic show too. No, that was just at your show the last time you were there. <laughs> yeah, it was just one show. <laughs> no, that is that is a kick ass room. You are right. I know you uh you rave about it all the time, but it is it is one of the, the, the one of the best uh, that I've ever seen. Very well run, uh great service, really good food too. If they're early. A hundred percent. The they well, the way they set up that back room at Boxcars Pub and Grub, it really does feel like you're walking into just a smaller version of the improv. Yeah, Would you agree? For it. I, they won't let me into the improv. Have you? But you're not even as a as a as a uh, audience member. I'm just assuming. I've never tried. But okay. I'm just assuming. All right. It's no, it's a great club. Like you walk in, you or a great. It's a great bar. You walk in, you feel like you're in a real comedy club. You know, like and they they do a great job of presenting comedy there, and that's why every goddamn show is sold out. So I'm giving you guys in Southern Wisconsin, Northern Illinois, right now the heads up to get out there and buy tickets to see Nathan Tricky Allen, the Maniac of Magic. Oh, and psychic. I've decided to start doing psychic. And he's going to start doing psychic shit, so there. be prepared. Let me try, Let me try this. Uh, I, got, I, got a, I got a number written down. There's okay. a number from 1 to 100. Here, though. You want me to guess it? Yeah. You want me to? Hey, let's do this. Let me get no, some no, comments no, no, from the people. Way, no, no, no. I'm gonna... <laughs> All right, I'm going to guess 74. What's that? 74. 74. You nailed it. Is there any is there any demonstration that you can give where you can have people guess something and they'll write their comments in on the Facebook Live right now and then we can see if you can match answers or something along those lines? Is there some way that we can incorporate my Facebook Live and or the YouTube Live audience right now with a magic trick that you can do, like a little mentalism over the phone? Uh, probably. <laughs> I Damn it, you put me on the spot. I used to do this shit all the time. How about this, uh, fucker? Guess how many ounces I have left in my beer. Yeah, how many ounces, you said? Yeah. Ounces left in my beer. Uh, no, it's definitely uh, zero. <laughs> well done. Holy shit. So if you guys want to see more of those types of amazing abilities, you need to head to Boxcars <laughs> Pub and Grub uh, Wednesday, October 4th in Clinton, Wisconsin. If there are any tickets left, I'm sure there will be tickets left, though, because we're going to try to – we got like 200 seats we're trying to fill in Tealman, Minnesota at BJ's Bar and Grill for the Dirty Jokes and Magic Trick Show where we keep it real, we keep it honest, and you know what? I'll say the word retard. I'll say the entire list of banned words at the uh, – which I – you know what? My, we looked that up. And the entire list of banned words that you should not say to marginalize people, it's like it's it's like a hundred and fifty words deep. There there are words like you can't you couldn't call like the word death is on the offensive list. You say the word death? The word death, D E A F is on the offensive list. Oh, when yeah, we looked well, that shit my wife and I looked that shit up this morning. Uncle Bobby talked to him for my shows. Can you be my spirit guy? <laughs> If my Uncle Bobby was my spirit animal, I'd be a Wookiee. <laughs> and this Saturday, I will be doing my one-man show at the Elks Club in Ray, Colorado. If I got any Colorado friends and fans, drive your ass out from Denver or Colorado Springs or Leadville. I know where y'all live. Make your way to Ray, Colorado. Nathan and I will actually be performing in Leadville coming up uh, uh, November 8th, 
Wednesday, November 8th. We will be there at the Historic Pastime Bar. This uh, Then Saturday, October 7th, we'll be at BJ's Bar and Grill in Tealman, Minnesota. Thank you guys so much for your comments. My Uncle Russ was on. We didn't get to very many comments today, but we're almost 25 in the, minutes into this fucking thing. I'm out of beer. I'm out of questions. What about you, Nathan? You got any closing remarks? Uh, no. No, I don't. Well, there you have it from the Whitmeister himself. <laughs> And you can check out Nathan's website at maniacandmagic.com. You can go to Dirty Jokes and Magic Tricks. Uh, is it Dirty Jokes and Magic Tricks show? Uh, Dirty Jokes and Magic Tricks.com. Dirty Jokes and Magic Tricks.com. Thank you, Bob LaFada, for the likes and the love. Thank you, everybody who joined in. Thank you, Lou Deck, for your comments. The rest of you, hit us up with some likes. Hit us up with some shares. Hit us up with some hate. I don't care. Whatever you do, make a comment. You got a problem with something I have to say? Just comment about it. Don't go anonymously report me to Facebook and get my fucking video deleted. Let's have an interaction. Let's have a conversation. Let's have an intellectual debate. I'm not the type of guy that's going to get on Facebook and be like, if you don't like it, you can unfriend me. Let's go to war, motherfucker. That's not the type of guy I am. But I will tell you this. If you're going to sit back on your computer or on your phone and you're just going to anonymously report fuckers because they say something that you don't like then you're a coward and I know that you're a coward and that's not on the offensive list so thank you guys for watching I'll be back tomorrow for Thursday, throwback Thursday uh, 4.20pm or as close as possible in the meantime, dog bless America <laughs>